Pirates of the Meek, where we watch made-for-TV movies and miniseries so you don't have to. From Gia to Xenon, Hysteria to Sybil, welcome to Movies of the Meek. Yeah, Bright is the uh, David Ayer um, Netflix movie written by Max Landis, right? Yeah, um, partially. And it is essentially a, a, a horrible monstrosity of all of his other movies, like <laughs> Training Day, um, uh, and the Watch. Um, also had hints of like Bad Boys and like uh, Fifth Element was another one that came to mind. Essentially, yeah. it's a it's like a a like a buddy cop movie. Um, sometimes serious, sometimes funny. Yeah. Um, but the the whole catch is it's set in this alternate reality where. Um, like high fantasy creatures exist alongside humans so yeah. elves and orcs um like pixies fairies um they don't really get into like everything it's it's mainly focuses on elves and orcs and um like magic users uh, but they all exist in like a, a modern setting in, yeah in, in la and it's all about um will smith's character i already forget his name ward something ward ward yeah um Who's like an old cop? He's an experienced cop, and he and he gets partnered with like I is he the first orc? He is ever the to first a... orc police officer, yeah. And he's a rookie, and he's horrible at his job. <laughs> like we see, we see them chasing a perp or something, uh, or they, they were doing something in the beginning of the movie, and um, and uh, Will Smith gets shot in the chest because the his partner Jacoby. He was getting his, him a burrito. His, his work partner was getting him a burrito. Um, he gets shot in the chest, and then um, Jacoby like, fails to catch the perp after that. Uh, so that's kind of like... That establishes that there's a lot of tension between the two, besides the fact that, you know, he's an orc. Um, and and so, so this movie kind of... The first, like, 35 minutes is setting up tension between the two of them. Yeah, there's a lot of tension. Like, they <laughs> build a lot of tension between those two characters. Like, legit, the first 35 minutes of this movie, like, okay, so Will Smith gets shot in the first minute and a half. Yeah. And then after that, it's 34 minutes of just, like, them talking and you finding out that people fucking hate orcs. Uh, Will Smith fucking hates orcs. <laughs> um, and, like, his daughter is like i fucking wish you weren't a cop and he's just like i gotta make money and his wife is like i fucking wish you weren't a cop you're with that fucking orc he's gonna get you shot again and he's like i'm not trying to get shot baby and in like five years like i'm gonna be out of here and she's just like man i fucking hate this shit and then they talk about fairies for a really long time and and th- that was like the first instance where i was just like i was like this fucking dialogue just like hurts like <laughs> yeah dude all the dialogue hurts in this movie it because it, it, it's 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 one of those things where it's like in a fantasy setting you're so used to people being like and that's when the dragon came forth and the pixies fires raged in the night sky but to hear like will smith as like a police officer that's a dad being like i don't want to take no fairies out and then saying fairy lives don't matter today like hearing them say Ugh. fairy was like so bizarre Fuck, and it's so felt- weird <clears throat> It felt like different writers wrote different characters in this movie. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it felt like they, they probably, there was a script that Max Landis wrote and people edited it over and over again. Oh, yeah. Um, because even the conversations between Ward and Jacoby, they feel so stilted. Um, there's zero chemistry between the two. <laughs> like, it, like, isn't it weird, Max? Like, it, it felt like, like, Will Smith was written to be like Bad Boys Will Smith. Yeah. Like, funny, funny cop with a potty mouth and then like Jacoby is really serious. I, I don't know. The whole and, and that's 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 a lot more just like Will Smith in general because a lot of his dialogue, of course he's gonna put that big willy spin on, you know, and, and yeah, then Yeah, maybe it was just the way he's he was delivering it. I don't Yeah, know. and then on top of that he like improvised a shit ton of stuff. Like the really? fairy lives don't matter today wasn't in the script. Oh my god. You know, the and, fucking and all the dude, all the racial shit in this movie was so <laughs> like out of place. So, so, like, so the, 
the tone they established at the beginning. So that's, you know, one of the things that, that I, you know, was f- fucking focusing on so hard in this movie is, 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 you know, they started off, you know, with this, 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 the soundtrack creeps in and then, uh, it's like... showing you like orc graffiti and yeah. it's like of all these different things where it's like you know we follow the dark lord like he will rise again um and then it's like orc power fists and shit like that um and it, it's one of those things where you know uh it, the the thing that's strange about it is is thinking of them as you know obviously you know humans and orcs are both humanoids you know, like, they have human features and are technically considered to be, like, of relative, you know, like, intellectual capacity. But then you have something like a fairy, where a fairy still has humanoid characteristics, but for some reason they're thought of as, like, bugs or, like, rodents, like a fucking nuisance. Um, and, and so it was one of those things where it was like, like, there's so much like world building that happens in the fucking background that like, I had no idea like what these interactions were like. Cause the premise of this movie is that basically Lord of the Rings happened 2000 years ago. Yes. Like that's literally the plot line. And it even like, if you read the fucking script, it says this move, like this script is dedicated to J.R. Tolkien and David Ayer. And that's how he got David Ayer interested in it. And the, and once again, the idea is that like Lord of the Rings happened and this is the world 2000 years after it's like, it's such a cool concept. Like I like (laughs) the idea of this movie a lot. Yeah. It was and like the first five minutes, I was like kind of down for it. Like this is like this is a really cool thing, but they just fucking miss the mark like, every <laughs> time. <laughs> like with everything, um, and, 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 not to like shit on it too much. Like there was some cool stuff in the like I don't know. I enjoyed parts of it, but um, and so that's the thing that like it, it, it's it's confusing to me just because it's like what are you know like th- there there are like some racial interactions still but then there are also like these interactions that are almost like you know like more speciesist where it's like you know the all the elves are rich people um they go through elf town you know and then (laughs) (laughs) then you have elf town and and then you have you know the orcs which are are generally like they they basically like made them to look like you know it's, to use a derogatory term, like they were like living in ghettos. You that's know? the thing and, is like I don't like, I don't think they like took the time to like develop a unique culture for any of these species. Like, yeah, like orcs are just a placeholder for black gang uh, members, right? Yeah, like, and, like they like orcs just so over two thousand years, orcs just developed just happened to develop the same way that like in our in our present. Um, you know, black culture and, and gang culture and, and stuff developed, right? Like, it's like they're all wearing, like, gang outfits and they're all, it's it's like kind of just lazy. And the same thing with the yeah, elves, too. And, they're and, just, like, rich yuppies that are smart. And that was a super weird thing because, like, they, there are still gangs. Like, there's still the Mexican gang because <laughs> yeah. you meet that dude. And, and so that's one of those things where it's like, I couldn't help but, like, ask all these questions where I was like, did slavery happen? Like, it did, you know... <laughs> did like World War Two happen? Like, did all these did all these things happen still? Because it a lot of the things that are referenced in the movie, for example, the Shrek films are referenced in this movie, and I was just like, so somehow <laughs> this is a universe where it had magical creatures, but there's still a necessity for Mike Myers to have a, a fucking quadrilogy <laughs> of films about an ogre. You know, it it, 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 it was so confusing to me. Um, <laughs> And once again, like, you could, of course, say, like, you know, that's an improvised line and and that it's just them wandering off script. But it's like you could regulate that and prevent that from happening. Um, and yeah, but I mean, even as like even the fact that they like someone heard him improvising and thought it was funny and kept it in. 
was bizarre because it wasn't funny. No. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's you know. what I'm saying. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It, um, and, 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 and yeah. And, and so that's the thing is that it's like you have this world building and, and a lot of it is, is interesting and you would love to understand how it came about. Like, how is it that the elves are so rich? How is it that, you know, like the, the humans are somehow completely unaffected and basically were exactly the same, even though all these magical things happened um and then also like there's dragons if you noticed wait and what? centaurs oh no yeah i saw the centaur when they were the centaur cop when one, they're beating one, up like... all the orcs yeah um but then clever. so then I there's one that. establishing scene and it just shows the outside of la and there's just dragons flying oh in the fucking really background Dude, I fucking I must have missed that one. And, and and so that's the thing is that's like it's this fucking weird world that I just like don't understand. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of like another movie that did it well. I don't like not exactly this thing. This is I don't know. This I don't think I've ever seen a movie where there was like high fantasy in, in a modern setting quite like this. Yeah. Um. Have you seen maybe like District Nine? Have you seen that movie? Yeah. Yeah. Like I thought like one of the most interesting parts about that was seeing like. The aliens, uh, you know, getting stranded on Earth, and then after, like, 30 years of being stuck in a ghetto, like, what that looks like. Yeah. Right? Like, they weren't wearing, like, they weren't, like, <laughs> they didn't look like uh, the Bloods and the Crips. They were, like, they just looked like, you know, starving aliens <laughs> in yeah. the desert. Like, it was just, like, a realistic portrayal of that. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, this just felt really lazy. Like whenever they, wherever they could just put like a stupid fantasy creature in, they would do it with, with no context. Um, all right, whatever. Harsh, let's, harsh but fair. let's just let's just get past all the all the fun world buildings. So, you know, uh, yeah. He, yeah. So Jacoby goes to pick up Will Smith at his house after Will Smith has beaten a fairy to death. Um, <laughs> yeah, right off the bat, murders a fairy. <laughs> and, oh, and so he, he, you know, he drops off uh, Will Smith's daughter at school. <clears throat> Will Smith's daughter's like, I fucking hate you being a cop. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm going to work. And so he goes to work and they put everyone in their cars together. Uh, and that is yeah. when, of course, uh, Will Smith goes and talks to Margaret Cho, which I was stoked Margaret Cho is in this because <laughs> I love Margaret Cho. She's hilarious. <laughs> um, and Will Smith was like, Margaret Cho, I don't want to be in this car with this with this orc cop and she was like well no one wants to be in a car with you either so sucks to suck and he's like man um and then like he talks to you know like internal affairs and they're like hey like we think we think that this orc you know is like blooded and that you know he's like he let that kid get away on purpose and you know basically we just want you to wear this wire um and we want you to find out all the shit on him uh and just get him to confess and we can get him out of your car and Wilson is like all right now I thought that something would come of that and nothing comes of that you know because because there's there's a few things in terms of like a standard story beat that this movie had the opportunity to do but it just doesn't um one of which was your obvious story beat is is that like they finally get bonded together and they're like friends and they're like brothers and then you know that's yeah. when jacoby yeah. would find out that will's been wearing a wire yeah, and yeah exactly. there's a point it's of like contention again you know yeah but they they kind of immediately forget about that um yeah. Uh, and instead they replace it with the with the other like dirty cops turning on on the orc and Will Smith and Will yeah. Smith has to make the choice between being dirty or saving uh, his partner. Yeah. So they, they could have just picked one of those things. Yeah. Um, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah. So <laughs> that's quickly forgotten about. Um, uh, and and then I guess like the they go. Um, they get the house call right for, for yeah. like, like the big scene, like the the big. Uh, why don't you explain this, Max? What what we find in this house? Oh, <laughs> I mean, so they show up at the house. Jacoby is like, "We should wait for backup. We should wait for the cavalry." And then Will Smith's like, "We all the cavalry." And it's like, "Yeah, okay." Um, <laughs> so, so they they go in the house, um, and they they instantly see that someone's been disintegrated. And they're like, that's that's magic disintegration powers. Um, 
They've already awesome. had they've already had one shootout at this point. They had to shoot a sniper guy in the window, um, and then they get inside, yeah. and that's where they see like this woman's been like bonded this into the wall. Confused the shit out of me. <laughs> I had no idea what the hell I was looking at. It was it was a woman who was. <laughs> Half her body has been disintegrated. She is just a torso, like, <laughs> mounted to the wall like an angel with her, her arms pinned her, apart. Her, 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 like, torso and lower body, like, like completely like turned glowing. into, like, weird tendril things that are, like, splayed on the wall and just, like, glowing. I was, I thought, I don't know, I don't know what to think of it. I was like, I don't know if this is a living thing or this is this, like, some kind of, like piece of art yeah i had no idea what it was my thing was that i assumed and this is just because of how many fantasy things i've read and seen i thought that that was like a door and that she was like a guard of like uh like a passageway oh um but then it turns out that that was just a spell put on her and yeah. she was it gonna was a, die <laughs> it was a neat visual effect i thought it looked cool oh I just yeah i didn't know i just it was confusing <laughs> i don't know what yeah. the hell i was looking at and, and when um, they and then when they when they the, like jacoby and will come upon it jacoby's just like that's magic and i was like <laughs> okay so i guess that's what magic looks like in this world like what is that um and you never know other than just like it's a spell like, they don't explain why it looks like that, what it does, but that's fine. And so then they basically uh, find the the girl that has the wand. Her name is Tika. Tika. And she is an ex-Inferni member. <laughs> okay, so the Inferni are a magical cult. Yes. Who are trying to resurrect the Dark Lord. Yeah. Um, they need three brights, which are magic users, to do mm-hmm. it. So apparently, um, and that that was one of those things that I was like, I was like, okay, so how many wands do exist? Because mm-hmm. apparently, not only is it rare uh, to, I guess, find a wand, but then on top of that, it's rare to be able to touch one without exploding. Yeah, they don't they don't go into the history of the wands, do they? No, at all. Um, I guess you could look at them like the maybe like the rings. Maybe? Is that, like, an equivalent? Like, they were created, you know, during the Dark Ages or whatever, um, and they, they have all the power. I don't know. It seems like magic can only be used with the wands and by a bright. Right? Yeah, and that okay. that's also, you know, one of the things that they say is that they're like, uh, <laughs> magic was able to take the Dark Lord away, and it's only magic that will be able to do that. Like, guns will do fucking nothing. Yeah, I, li- I like how... In this universe, the only way to know if a person is a bright is by touching a wand. <laughs> and if they're not a bright, they immediately disintegrate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. I mean, it was cool, but um, that plays a big part later in the movie. Yeah. Um, they get Tika, and that's that's where, you know, this movie, uh, uh, not to be a dick, gets kind of boring. Um because yeah. I I can't unfortunately I know that this plot's been done before I just can't really think of what else it was similar to the only thing that I can <laughs> the only thing in my memory banks I can explain the kind of plot <laughs> but the only thing that like it's it's been done before in my brain right now is there's a Batman Adventures comic book <laughs> um where Batman is given a baby um and the the baby actually <laughs> So its DNA has codes for uh, missiles um, embedded in its DNA. And so if you uh, decode the baby's DNA, you'll have the control of, like, I think it's Russian missiles. (laughs) And, And so the plot of it is that basically... Everyone in the world is after this baby's th- this baby's DNA, and so Batman is given the baby to protect, and so he's basically going around the city trying to find a safe haven for this child. When like the Russian mob is after him, the CIA is after him. Basically, everyone that you could imagine is after him, and that's hmm. that's basically the same plot as this, which is you know you have like you have your MacGuffin, which is the wand. And everyone is just trying to get it. And so it's about your protagonist just trying to basically survive the night. Yeah. And yeah. and 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 that's unfortunately like <laughs> 
<laughs> up until the finale of the movie, that's kind of all you need to say about it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's like, kind it of, they just, just remind, it's like, it could be like a good cop movie, but they, but everything else distracts from that. Yeah. Like that, it's kind of like you were saying, it's like what you just described in that Batman comic and like End of Watch. And End of Watch is just them surviving the night, right? Yeah. But then take End of Watch and add in unnecessary racial tensions between different <laughs> high fantasy species and add in a wand and add in Tika and add in uh, the the magic uh, FBI and yeah. add in uh, super villains. <laughs> and, 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 and so the villain uh, was the least fleshed out character. Yeah. And, and yeah. it was, it was, it was fascinating just because it was like everyone else, you understood their intentions and everyone's intentions were so clear. Even like you were saying, the magical FBI men, <laughs> cause, cause at least like we understand that, like they're trying to get this wand. They're trying to get it under protection. They're trying to conceal it mm-hmm. and hide it and take it away so that like no one has access to it. Um, and the one guy even says, like, I can't even remember the villain's name. That's how fucking forgettable yeah, and mediocre she is. Um, but that's that's one of the things that is, like, is, is you know, fascinating is that, once again, like, he's fleshed out. He's like, I've been searching for this girl and, like, hunting after her for 20 years. And this is, like, I think I have a chance. And I was like, okay, like, good. Like, he has a motivation. It's clear. I understand it. Mm-hmm. Tight. I had no re like no understanding why she would be doing what she's doing. Yeah, we just know she's trying to resurrect the Dark Lord. Yeah. Um, we don't know why. You know, I, I don't. What, I don't what understand I'm... why. What kept them from resurrecting him before Will Smith and Jacoby showed up? Besides the fact that Tika became like so, she was part like Tika is the villain's sister. Is yeah. that correct? And they were kind of training Tika to become a bright to help resurrect the Dark Lord. Yeah. Tika went rogue essentially and attacked all of them and tried to escape with a wand. But there's really there's nothing that they're that I can see that prevented them from doing this before all this happened. Yeah, and and especially you know with the understanding that that is the only wand between the two of them. Yeah, you know, like Tika has her sister's wand, you know, and and so it's like you need three wands to resurrect the Dark Lord. Um, and made... there's all this talk of the prophecy. There's a, this is a whole another thing in this movie. Like there's like there's so they before they 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 find Tika, they they uh, go to a call. Um, there's just some crazy man shouting in the street about the prophecy, um, and and he. He ends up talking to Jacoby and Orkish, saying that Jacoby's the chosen one or something. Like, yeah. he's the one, but also Will Smith's the one. And something about the prophecy, I, I just didn't understand. Like, it didn't quite fit in with everything. I guess at the end it did, um, but it was, like, really confusing trying to follow it throughout the movie. Like, who was the one? What does the one do? Why is—I I guess it ties back into the— what they were saying that magic defeated the dark lord um, yeah which is what happens at the end a bright uses magic to defeat uh the villain whatever her name is yeah and, but <laughs> but it's like well i thought jacoby was the the chosen one or is the prophecy like one comes back to life one's the magic one is that what it is yeah i i, I don't, don't fucking know yeah. dude like i don't <laughs> that's what i'm saying like <laughs> that's like a big part of the movie that i don't understand yeah um, um, and, and, uh, you know, structurally, one of the things that I was hoping for is that they would get three brights, you know, um, and yeah. that they would bring the Dark Lord back. And then, you know, <laughs> That's what you expecting. find out Will Smith is the chosen one and he fights them, you know? Yeah. Like the finale that I had planned in my head. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. The finale I had planned in my head was that Jacoby is a bright, okay? Mm -hmm. And so, when he finds out that Will Smith has been wearing a wire, he now has a clear choice to make, and it's that Will Smith is a shitty person, and that 
he should obviously just do what his people have been born to do and what they tell him multiple times through the movie they're like your clan is gonna call for you and you need to remember what you are and so I thought that what would happen is you know Jacoby gets the third wand Jacoby finds out that he's a bright and then Jacoby finds out that Will Smith has been betraying him and trying to get him to confess so that he could fire him and so that's when Jacoby decides to summon the Dark Lord Oh. They summon the Dark Lord, and then the finale of the movie is basically Will Smith discovering, boom, he's a second Bright, and he defeats the Dark Lord. Oh, that would have been, I think, a little better than what we got. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and that's, that's what it felt like it was setting up, but then it, 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 it just didn't, you know? It did, it, 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 like... The fucking nothing happened and that and that's one of the things is that's like you you have a clear understanding of stakes there's th- three wands are needed and you see two people that are in Fernie that are brights so you're looking for that third person which should logically either be will smith or jacoby and then yeah. that that finale should be about them feeling conflicted and not being sure whether or not they should bring about the end of the fucking world and instead, none of that happens. There's just one wand, and there's three brights. <laughs> and a very weak-ass finale. And a very weak-ass finale. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the end result is they just fucking kill everybody, and then it's just Jacoby and fucking Will Smith being all tired. Uh, that was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Tika, Tika leaves, um, and she's fine. She's now just like a bright... And oh, so, so so that brings up another thing, because you know they 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 decide to hit up their Hispanic friend Rodriguez, um, and they're like Rodriguez is a good cop, like he won't betray us, like he's a good dude, um, and so they call him up, and 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 so the thing is is that Rodriguez is like you should talk to the Elf FBI agents, um, <laughs> and give them the wand, and Will Smith is like no nah, man, like that's fucked up, like we're not gonna do that, like we don't know who's dirty and who's not dirty. And then at the end of the movie, it's the elf FBI agents who take the wand. And so it's like, hey, guess what? You guys could have shaved off 35 minutes of this movie if you guys just gave him the wand. Because guess what? It turns out he was fine. <laughs> yeah, I was expecting get, get, them to be dirty, too. Because guess, they, guess what they, they didn't do? They, they, they didn't abuse power. <laughs> they, yeah. Well, they established that, like, the the cops are dirty like in his unit and will smith's unit are dirty they try to turn on him yeah and nothing comes of it yeah (laughs) um what's in what's the other part that was interesting or uh the oh like the orc when they get captured so they are like they're fighting for their lives all night um, yeah after they they find tika tika's name right um uh and they eventually get they get captured by the orc gang yeah the orcs um and they they are in the middle of some kind of like festival of yeah. peace, which I thought was pretty funny. Yeah, it was um, a block party. The block party, and they're pissed <laughs> off because Will Smith and Jacoby fuck their block party up. Yeah. So they decide to kill them. Um, and something happens very similar to like Training Day, where um, they realize so the the leader of the gang is having his son kill about you know shoot Jacoby. Yeah. For, for disturbing the, the the block party, and we find out that that kid uh, was the the well he wasn't the yeah he was the perp earlier in the movie that uh, that Jacoby let go. Yeah. Same thing happened in Training Day, kind of. They uh, Ethan Hawke like saves the gang member's uh, cousin or something. Yeah. And you think they're gonna they're gonna let him off, and they flip it, and they just kill Jacoby anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Which like is fine. And I'm completely fine with that if they let him die. Like, there's weight to it if he dies there. Yeah. But instead, Tika just picks up her magic wand, which she has not used the whole <laughs> fucking movie, and just uh, resurrects She used him. it to explode a car one time. Yeah, okay. By accident. Yeah, by accident. Um, <laughs> and she's able to... I mean, she is clearly, like, pretty fucked up after doing this this spell because it's 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 i guess it's powerful spell she's all you know she's like bleeding black ooze and shit but yeah um it was it just like took the wind right out of that scene i was like that's pretty fucking dope if they just kill one of the main characters off yeah 
but they don't do it, of course. Yeah, of um, course not. <laughs> it's like they resurrect them, and then all the orcs start bowing because yeah, he's he's alive again. It's like what the, I don't know. It was just it was so fucking. It was just yeah. Lame. It, was, it was pointless. Yeah, it was pointless. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And and, and that was you know like after <laughs> after that scene, we were ninety minutes into the movie, and that's when like the plot that I want to have happened thirty minutes into the movie started. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I was like, oh okay, tight. <laughs> I also I also like how. Um, they um kind of remind me of like Batman vs Superman kind of where like they she's dying like Tika's dying right and they're like what do we do like how do we save you and she's like I need to go to the pool and then they're like where's the pool and it's like back at the safe house that you found me at at the beginning of the movie um it remind me of Batman vs Superman when they when they grab like this they throw the spear in the pool and they have to go back to the same spot they were just at <laughs> yeah. to get the spear um but I just thought it was funny how they just end up back at that like. Yeah that little shitty ghetto house. Yeah. Um, and it, 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 that's, that's where their headquarters are. Like that's where this powerful, you know, uh, cult is stationed in this like little shitty house. Yeah. And that's and where it, like it, the magical fountain is. And it made like, no oh. sense. Yeah. It made no sense. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking dumb. But that's where the finale is. It's in, it's in a uh, basement with like <laughs> a little, a little like kiddie pool. <laughs> um, that whole scene's dumb too, where they're, they, they go and they fight all the bad guys and, and then, uh, the, it, like those guys, those, those villains are so lame, man. They're like all like, they like Matrix villains or something. Yeah. Um. But anyway, uh, Will Smith saves the day. <laughs> He's a bright. He grabs the wand <laughs> right before everything's about to go to shit, and then Tik is like, "Say this spell," and he does, and then um, the wand like explodes, and yeah, and. Uh, and they, and the place like burns down. I don't know why they did this. They like they're both walk. Uh, Jacoby and Warder are escaping the, the blaze, and yeah. like they are almost at the door. And then like Jacoby just loses Ward. Yeah. <laughs> and he and he walks out, and he's like, "What? The, oh God!" And he goes back in, gets Ward, and then they're just like laying on top of each other in front of this burning building, just saying. Yeah. Just saying dumb shit to each other. Yeah. <laughs> like, it wasn't even funny. It was just like... <laughs> just oh, saying oh, dumb shit to oh, each other. That, that was... It was hot in there, wasn't it? Ah, <laughs> oh, dude. Um, <laughs> hot enough for you? And then yeah. Jacoby's like, check, please. Ugh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, they were the worst. <laughs> Um, the I don't. Un- the unfortunate thing is that, like, I feel like it wasn't acted poorly. I just felt like they, like everything was just bad. Yeah, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I, f- I don't. No, no. There's no trivia. There's no goofs. It's too new. Um. Now, uh, <laughs> I will say a uh, little bit of trivia is that when uh, Jacoby is listening to his music, uh, which Will Smith says, turn that orcish shit off, um, uh, he says it's the greatest love song, uh, the greatest orc love song ever. Um, and the song, if you listen to it, uh, the pinch harmonic section, uh, it is uh, Hammer Smashed Face by Cannibal Corpse, <laughs> which I got super stoked about. That's another thing. Like, why? That's orcish. <laughs> In that timeline, orcs wrote that song. <laughs> In that timeline, yeah. Or 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 cannibal corpse are orcs. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a love song, though. That's what I'm saying. Like in that universe, that's a love song. That. I don't, I don't know. And, and then, um, in in terms of uh, uh goofs, okay. Um, the Inferni, uh, cut a telephone cable and it cuts the cell phone reception. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But there's going to be a sequel. Yeah, already. Hopefully um, they'll bring Max Landis back. They are not. He is gone. <laughs> he is gone. <laughs> Unfortunately, but... <laughs> and that... I'm just kidding. I mean, I think... Re- reading the I script wanna... was the worst. I want to... Was it his original or was it the Netflix? Like, yeah, so I edit? read his script and it was like, <laughs> once again, it would be like, it would be like, gas station explosion. This is where shit gets real. <laughs> Wait, really? And I was just like, this isn't how scripts are written, like, ever. So I have a question. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't bring this up, but are the orcs, do they have super strength? 
Because I guess so. You see they, the one lift a Hummer. You see one lift a Hummer when when Jacoby's fighting a few times in the movie, he like punches people and they fly across the room. But but then like but then Ward and Jacoby get beat up by the Orc gang and like you would think Ward would be completely dead. Like he would like you know what I mean? They beat yeah, the shit out of him. Like, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like I I felt like they were trying to establish that orcs were super strong, which they should be because they're orcs. Um, but not even just like they're muscular; like they have the power to lift, like their body, like multiple times their body weight. And and then like they show you know scenes of orcs beating up Ward, and he's fine. So. That that also makes me wonder because the one line they're like, they're like that's why all the orcs are in the NFL. Yeah, and right. And so that would make me think that only orcs would be allowed in the NFL at that point. Yeah. Cuz they'd be at a huge disadvantage to have humans cuz they could just be crushed to death. <laughs> um cuz they were like, "How many how many how many orc uh, basketball uh, players do you know?" <laughs> and he was like, "Uh," and they were like, "There are none." <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, I I would not suggest this movie overall. It's a fucking nah, slog. I, yeah, I, I wouldn't suggest it either. It's yeah. um, I mean, if you want to watch, if you want to watch something like this, I would watch Lord of the Rings and then like <laughs> the next night watch like Bad Boys and then you you probably be fine. Just imagine that they're the same. <laughs> yeah, you get. The best of both worlds doing it that way. <laughs> <laughs> because this is not the way to go about it. Um, I want to just end saying this is a cool concept, and I wish it was someone does it better than this. Yeah. So next week, um, I was actually looking at some of your suggestions over the past couple of months, and I want to do Man Thing. Oh. Yeah. You suggested that a couple months ago, I think. Um, it looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it looks amazing. Okay. 